Welcome to Man Word in the Field. Uh, I'm Alex, and to my right is Andy. And Andy, last time I saw you, you were you were a little more dressed up than this. You were wearing a suit and tie. This is a different kind of suit. You're wearing a bee suit. Why? It's because we need to talk about bees. Everybody's talking about our society, what's wrong with our society, and all that jazz. Turns out the secret to a good life is down in those beehives, the way the bees, uh, kind of their, their culture, if you will, the way they, they treat each other, the, the way they work as a community. There's so much that we can learn from it. So I want to take that today, show you what's going on in a beehive, answer some common questions, get some smoke in there, and then uh, look at what's, what's really going on and show how that kind of relates to our, our real world problems that we're having today, and maybe even talk about some solutions. That sounds great. Sounds like a uh, very fun and dynamic conversation we can have. Let's go. You coming? Yeah, no, I left my EpiPen at home, so you have fun. All right, well, suit yourself. So you can probably guess I'm a big fan of bees. I've been a bee farmer now for, for several years, starting with my, my first hive at my micro farm several years ago. There's a, a lot of conversation these days about the, the plight of bees. Nobody really knows where they're going or what's happening, but it's hard to get to it all unless we know the truth behind what's happening. So what I'm going to do here is just open up the hives and, and share some facts with you about what I'm seeing and, and what the bees are, are doing. All right, so let's smoke the front of them here. And what this does is a lot of people are, are confused about what smoke does. The smoke does a couple things. It masks the, the pheromones, so bees produce a lot of pheromones. It's how they communicate. It's just a smell. So the smoke um, kind of gets in that, that sensory, uh, uh, interrupts all that. The best history that we have shows that it was right around the 1600s that the Dutch first brought honeybees to the, to the U.S., to North America. And they did that because they needed a, a way or they wanted some help pollinating the crops that they were bringing with them. So after that, the, the bees sort of really tended to, to lead us west. They always seemed to be about 100 miles or so, um, 100 miles or so of man's transgressions west across the continent. As the bees went further west, we went further west. And as, as the bees went further west, they helped uh, you know, grow clover, different types of grasses, and that really helped our livestock. So it helped the, the Europeans travel west and, and survive as we moved west. So the bees played a big role in that. So in, until this point, the, the Native Americans had never really seen honeybees. They called them the, the white man's fly, but, but it quickly became a part of their culture. They started using honey uh, for medicine. They used the wax throughout, you know, for tools and that sort of thing. So it really became a part of the Native American culture. You may have heard this before, but bees have really become part of our culture. They're part of our vernacular, and that's why I really enjoy doing what I do. You've probably heard the term, you know, busy as a bee. Um, you know, a group of people, you know, considering having a hive mentality, or a woman maybe being, being called the queen bee. All right, so what we're looking at here, um, so you'll see there's, there's three boxes, and these two are called brood boxes. This is where the queen's living, where she's reproducing, where the the life of the, the hive is. And then this one's called a, a honey super. So they, they make the honey as stores for the winter. So right now they're, they're going out to flowers, um, getting the pollen, the nectar, and storing that. So the bees that are here, they're gonna be dead by the time the winter comes around. There's almost a, it's not a different species, but it's almost a different subset of bees that live in the winter. So it's really interesting from a society point of view. These guys are never gonna reap the rewards of their hard work. They're gonna be dead. So this is, should be pretty fresh honey. I just put this super in fairly recently. And they're pretty nice and calm today. So here you go. You can see uh, lots, of, lots of honey in there. So that's all what you would call capped honey. That's ready to go. I can take that and process it and uh, eat it today. Um, and then over here, oh, that's all capped. You can see on the edges there, it's not all capped yet. All right, so we'll put this back in. Looks like most of these are largely filled up. Let's go down into the, the brood box and see if we can't find the queen. So this is going to be a little tougher. There's a, 
a screen on here called a, a queen excluder. Some guys won't run them, some guys do. It keeps the queen from going up into this, this honey box and uh, laying eggs. You don't want eggs in your honey. So now we gotta do this, tip it over. This box, it weighs about 40 pounds or so. We'll take it over here. If I crush a bee, it releases a scent, or if they start stinging, it releases a scent, and uh, they'll, they'll know to attack. So what we're looking for to find the queen is uh, just some, some eggs. So she's usually not near this, this capped brood. There's no reason to be up here if there's a lot of capped brood. We'll just move this over. There's tens of thousands of bees in a hive, but no bee, not even the queen, is more important than the other. They all work together to make sure things are, are healthy and going the, the direction they need to be going. And, and there really is no politics when, when things go wrong. They really are just trying to work together to survive. So if that queen were to die, it wouldn't be the end of the world for the hive. It would definitely set it back. It's not ideal to, to lose the queen. But what they'll do is they'll find one of those eggs and they'll start feeding it royal jelly. Um, here, let me show you that queen real quick. Where'd she go? Here she is, right here. The queen bee really knows that she works for the hive, that they're all working together. And that's where, you know, I'd love for that message to spread to Washington, that those folks work for us. So each bee in here has its own job. There's a lot of bees um, flying around outside the hive right now. There's probably about a third of all the bees are out looking for pollen and uh, nectar to bring back to the hive. And then there's nurse bees working in here that are, are feeding the, the larva and the, the young ones that are just being born. It helps to think of a, a beehive as, as one organism where each of the bees is almost an individual cell within it. All right, so let's pack it up and go check back in on Alex. Hey, welcome back. Hey, hey. How are the bees doing? They're pretty good. Yeah, I, uh, I could hear what you were saying from up here, and it sounded like some pretty, pretty inspiring commentary. Nice. You know, and I, and I think that you kind of got to the core of what we're kind of all about and what we're trying to do here. You know, this is valuable know-how that the average person doesn't really have anymore. So that's exactly why I started Manward, is to kind of get away from the mainstream mentality and show folks, you know, you've probably never seen a lot of this. You've never heard of ideas this way. Nobody's been in a beehive and, and seen how that really connects to the culture. And so that's why we're, we're doing all this, and that's the core of Manward. Yeah, and so I have a feeling we're going to be taking some more trips down to the hive. I might even come next time. Here's to that. So if you like what you saw here today, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel.